Hi, this is Eric Hollenberry from GitHub. I'm an implementation engineer, and I'm joined by Jonathan Silva uh, of Axosoft, makers of Git Kraken. So we've done one of these videos before um, with the Git Kraken tool, and what we did was we kind of covered the overview of how you just generally make branches and changes with Git um, on, your, uh, on your workflow. This video is an extension to that, and it's about uh, a few more advanced things. So for audiences who come from um, Subversion or Perforce or other tools, um, there are often a ton of questions that I get in trainings where people ask me, well, how do I view file structure? How do I handle um, looking into a lot of things that aren't necessarily intuitive when you use the command line or other tools? It's also a way for us to, uh, for even those of us who don't come from other tools, to see how we can kind of enhance our workflow and save our time doing some really great things. So with that said, um, Jonathan, do you, do you wanna jump in? Yeah, glad to be here, Eric. Thanks for having me. It's good to be here again. And today, I am gonna go through some of, the, some of the deeper features, specifically the Merge Conflict tool. You know, how to understand what you're looking at when you're reviewing a file, going through its history, seeing who made what changes. So I'll be stepping through each one of those. There's a common scenario that our users encounter when they're collaborating with others um, in any given repo. And that's when you make a change that conflicts with another change that someone else made. The way to think about it is, is that Git tracks changes to your file. So here I have the Git Kraken UI. And when I click on a file here on the right side, what you're looking at is the diff of the file. So if I wanted to view the entire file, I can just click on File View. And this is the content of the code. So this is all the code that exists in this mkdocs.gaml file. And if I wanted to see what was changed in this specific commit, I would switch to diff view to view what was going on. So these changes are what Git tracks whenever you make a commit. So sometimes you might make a change to a certain line in a certain file, but someone else, or even yourself, you've made a commit to the same files as well. And so when you go to ask Git to perform a merge, it doesn't know which changes you wish to keep. Uh, it, it's asking for a human's help to make that call. To, so to show you what I mean by that, I actually have an example built out where I have two branches here at the very top. One is Glow Feature, and the other one is Feature Glow. And you'll notice that the two most recent commits edit the same file. So this one, Word to Glow, I edit the Word to Glow file. And if you notice this commit node on this other branch, I edit the same file. So Word to Glow is right here as well. And I also made a change to the calendar.md file on both of these branches as well. And not only did I edit the same file, I edited the same lines of that file. So I happen to know this since you know, I, I have prepared the example, but when I go to drag and drop, say you don't know that that's gonna happen. If you do attempt to just drag and drop to perform the merge, so you'll be, once, uh, just to show you that real quick, I know that was fast. If I just drag and drop glow feature on top of feature glow, it'll ask me what options I want, or it'll present me with the options that are available. So merge, rebase, interactive rebase as a bonus. I'm gonna go with the merge since that's what I want to do. Uh, but aha! Get Kraken says, hey, it looks like you've edited the same lines of the same files. There's a couple of conflicts that we need a human to look at and review. It, you know, it's asking, which changes do you want to save and move forward with? And once you tell me which ones you want to keep, we can go ahead and proceed with the merge. So we make that much easier in Git Kraken than, say, the command line. If you have attempted this in the command line before, you may recall seeing a series of alligator looking uh, icons, or I think they separate it by the carrot keys. And it's a little difficult to navigate through that and understand what you're looking at. Alligator this, icons, yeah, I love that. Allig yeah. <laughs> That's what it reminds me of, you know, like, uh, just like they want to eat something. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so here I have uh, the two files that, were, that are conflicting. And the way I would, would go in and review what was happening is I just click on, let's first look at the calendar.markdown file. So here's what Kraken does. It'll open up the merge conflict editor and you're presented with the two branches and the output. So here on the left side, I have branch A, which is feature glow, and branch B on the right, 
which is glow feature. So here's where you tell Git, Git or Git Kraken in this case, hey, I actually want to keep all of B right here. So I can just check the B the branch to select everything. If I wanted to fine tune things a little bit more though, I do have the option of just going either hunk by hunk. So in this case, there's only one hunk that's affected, but I can not only select the hunk, but I can also deselect lines that I don't want to have included in the merge, right? So you get to customize this however you want. Can I jump in with a question? Yeah, absolutely. So on the left side, is it just a white space commit? Is yeah, I think I, I just did one quick white space commit versus okay. over here, I think I added a whole new paragraph. Okay, and if there was content on the other side, we would see um, all of that listed just like on the right side and we could add in pieces of each? That's right. So I can actually show you that exactly because I think this one, the second conflict, ah. here you see um, we actually have conflicting verbiage here. So this repo is a support documentation for Gitkraken, so support.gitkraken.com. So this actually is a real markdown file that's you know hosted for our customers and users to review. Um, so on one of the pages we have inside of Gitkraken is where you can see Glow. But over here I say through the GK. Or, so I just have different verbiages between to navigate to the toolbar, go inside GK, um, to return to the toolbar. So I can kind of start to see maybe what I was thinking on one hand or maybe what I was thinking on the other. Or this could reflect changes by two different people. Um, so in my case, I'm thinking that I actually want to keep A in this instance, right? Um, since that looks much better. But uh, maybe over here, let's just say, except for this line, I'll, I'll also click on this line. So if you click to add a line from either side, we'll add it to the output here at the bottom, which you can edit even further. So you can just type to edit more. Did you do anything special to make it? What one thing I'm noticing is when you're scrolling, it's scrolling in all three windows. Mm -hmm. um, is that is that just default functionality? That's just me uh, scrolling through. But you can also just um, use these arrows to go conflict by conflict. Um, if you prefer to just you know go hunk by hunk. Great. That's, so yeah, but this scrolling here is default behavior. Cool. Uh, and then a few other questions. So I see open and beyond compare on the top right. Yes. What's that about? That is an external merge tool. So for those of you who maybe have a preferred merge tool, so I'm going up to the preferences here in the upper right icon here. So preferences in the upper right. Um, and under general, you have the option to tell Git Kraken to use a specific merge tool or diff tool. So I happen to have um, Beyond Compare installed on my machine. Um, which I can use as both either a merge tool or a diff tool. It's just there avail available if you want to just open it up in that UI instead. So let me just click on it and see what happens here. Continue. So it'll open up in this UI. Now I'm less familiar with Beyond Compare, but in case there's features in here that you prefer to use um, when you're going through merge conflicts, we support that as well. We want to give users the flexibility. Um, and then if you're ever just curious about what external merge tools we support, um, up on our docs, so this is the repo itself, right? Support.getkraken.com. Here it is as the website. Um, not only do we support Beyond Compare, but we also do File Merge, Kaleidoscope, KDIF, Araxis, and P4, P4 Merge. Cool. Yeah. Um, a lot of the questions that uh, we're kind of tackling today, just for greater context for anyone watching, um, is just the way that files um, are viewed and tracked with Git. So I, that we've a lot of people are transitioning from Perforce and other version control mm -hmm. tools, but Perforce um, is very much about the file structure and how files are viewed. Um, so even just seeing the P4 merge tool in there, that's something that a lot of people miss. So that's nice that that's a Yeah, good. hopefully it should bring something familiar. Um, if they're, especially if they're transitioning from Perforce over to Git, it should help kind of smooth out the transition. So what I'm going to do here, just to finish out the thought here, is once you're happy with the changes, once you're happy with the output, really, this is what you're looking at. Whatever you have here in the output is what Git Kraken will save um, for that merge. So here I've, I've made my decision on what changes I wish to keep for the Word to Glow conflict. We need to go back to the calendar one and make the same, uh, make a similar dis decision here. So here I've decided to keep B. Actually, let me double check something. 
So before and after, I just want to make sure this doesn't duplicate. Yep, this looks good. So I'm just going to save it. And so once you tell Gitkraken and what changes you wish to keep, um, you would go ahead and just stage all of those changes and then commit and merge. So the merge will go through, and there we go. That's how we've resolved all those changes that Git didn't know what to do with. It just needed a pair of human eyes to step through the code and make decisions about what to keep. So in my case, I was editing markdown files um, for a support website. You know, this definitely applies though to you know, your code base as well for your product or your web application, whatever it might be. So next, speaking of looking at things from the files perspective, whenever you select a commit, Gitkraken will show you the file that was modified in that commit here on the right side. And if you click on that file, we will take you to the changes from that file, files commit. So you can jump to file view though in Gitkraken just by clicking this tab in case you wish to review the entire contents of the file yourself. Mm -hmm. And if you want to just jump in and start editing, you can just click the edit this file and working directory and type to make changes, right? So I, I like to use this whenever I need to make quick, small changes. It just saves me the need of pulling up my favorite text editor to make those changes. And if you are happy with those changes, you can just click the save. I use the shortcut command S on my Mac. Um, and that's how I can get those changes here to show up in the unstaged area. I can click on it, I can see, oh, okay, I added this word. However, the point that I wanted to jump into next was, well, how do I know who made what changes to this specific file? So maybe I'm specifically interested in this calendar dot markdown file. You know, how do I know who did what or what changes have been made to this historically? So I'll start off first with the history option. So when you are viewing a file stiff, we do give you a shortcut to access the history. You can always access this option though too by right clicking on any file and just clicking file history. They'll both take you to the same place. And what we'll show you are just a list of commits that have ever been made against this file. So here we have just a quick short list of one, two, three, five commits that have been made. So I can go back to, this is Diane. Looks like there's some, been some renaming that was occurring based on these labels that I see right here. Um, cool, that is cool. Yeah. That's really nice. So you can actually I, find out who did what. I was actually curious to, to see what this would look like because you can do this on GitHub too. Uh, we, have the, we have a history button and the next thing that you're about to show. But you have to actually, when you click into it, you click in and view uh, each page kind of at a time. Mm -hmm. So being able to like filter through this, it just kind of goes back to your saving time. So this is nice. Yeah, you should be able to find out who, who was it, right? Just get the answer to that real quick. Sure. Um, and in this case, if you do wish to look at, maybe you're interested in the initial commit that Diane made, you can click on it and we'll take you to that commit in the graph. So it's this one. Nice. So it looks like Diane was making a, a number of changes, most of them renames. It may have been when we were making um, just a number of changes to the docs at that time. That is awesome. And th that's actually, so this is like directly relevant to, to a lot of the questions that uh, we get about file structure and how to view it. So Git does beautiful things under the hood, but sometimes it's really hard to get to, to parse that, especially if you're just using the command line. Right. And so when you're trying to view files, do you get their commands or decorations that you can add to them? Mm -hmm. But it's just to get it immediately into this view and then to see all these other files that were influenced at the same time. And even then, that ex the, the advanced thing that you showed where it shows the rename just in that dialog, that's all of these things save a ton of time. And I, it, it could be that I'm not fully versed in all the intricacies of all the tools, but I haven't seen something presented like that for the most part. So that's really cool. Yeah, and it, it definitely comes to life when you are in that situation where something is broken and you need to find out what happened. And so you have that urgency behind you. And so being able to get to the bottom of things much quicker, that's when, that's when our users truly see, oh, okay, all right. Thank you, you just saved me so much time, either with the merge conflict tool, that's one scenario where we get users with giving us that feedback, but also just being able to look through the history and also the blame, which I'll show next, just takes off a lot of overhead of having to memorize those command lines 
um, inputs or those decorations, as you were saying. Before you show blame, can I ask a question along these lines? Yes. Okay, so can we go to uh, the last commit or and any commit, I guess, but probably the most recent? Just the, the current state of our directory, great. And then can we rename a file here just to see what that looks like? Mm. So, oh, you mean just like rename it in the directory itself? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, because we, I we saw that those, those files were renamed. And um, one of the things that is sometimes difficult when you're changing a file, uh, especially with Git, is it'll mark it for removal and it'll mark it as being added. So if, if you've never, if someone has never seen this before, it's going to sound like a weird edge case, but due to the way that Git handles file changes, um, sometimes it just displays weird. So I'm curious, um, and other people who have seen this before uh, might know what I'm talking about. I'm curious what we'll see in this tool when you do that. So here I've changed the file faq.md to frequently asked questions.md. So the contents of the file were not changed, which is what I expected, right? All I did was go into Finder and change the name. But I, Git does detect that the change was made to the name itself and labeled it blue. Great. And okay. you did that just right from your directory, too. Yeah. I just did that from Finder. I found, I just browsed until I found a file that made sense to change. Right. Uh, and so I just expanded FAQ to frequently ask questions. And here's how it shows up. Cool. And it, it automatically knows. So that's wonderful. The, that doesn't happen. <laughs> in, a, in a lot of tools, so that's nice. Yeah, any change, that's the whole idea, right? So any change that you make to your directory, whether it be the file itself or the name, or if you delete or add files, you know, we will detect all of those changes and you'll see a whip up here in Git Kraken when that happens. Mm -hmm. And so, and that's what the color, the colors mean here. So if you see something that's yellow, that means the file was changed. Blue is for renamed. Red is for deletions and green is for additions. Oh, okay. I have another question then. Yes. Okay. So, well, I have two questions. Mm -hmm. This is this is great. So, if you delete a file, can we just remove one and see what that looks like? Let's see if I can even do it. Yep, I can. Oh, goodbye. There we go. So I just changed it. And then you'll have to double click that, right? So to mark that you've deleted it or stage it, I guess. Yeah. Okay. So to go through with it, I would have to stage each of these. Okay, I said double click because that's what you do in other tools, but it looks like this one, it'll just bring you to the file change. Okay. Yeah. So cool. if you click on it, yeah, you'll see what's been deleted. And yeah, once I commit both of these changes, it'll become committed to the repo for all to see. Okay, and then the next question is, I have strong opinions when it comes to stashing commits. Um, I generally feel that this can get really complicated, especially because the way that it stashes is in, I forget the exact term for it, but the, the list of things mm -hmm. that needs to be popped basically. And there's a lot of complexity just in navigating to stashed commits in general. When people see stash commits, that's when they're trying to switch between branches, but it might create a conflict as they switch. Um, generally, that's when that occurs. Right. What I would advocate for is actually it's kind of more advanced where you make a commit, call it a work in progress like we see in, in your default here, mm -hmm. and then come back and kind of reset to that when you want to start working on a branch again. Does Git Kraken have better way of viewing your stashed uh, area? Yeah, and you can do both of those scenarios. I think I followed along. So the first one is where you stash you just decide to stash and get cracking. Mm -hmm. um, so let me just call this whip webcast and I'm going to hit the stash icon. So it'll stash my changes. So a common scenario that at least I encounter is that I'll, I'll make commits or I'll make changes on the wrong branch and I'll catch myself just before I either commit or I can still undo the commit if I've already gone that far. Mm -hmm. So I can check out another branch and I can pop the commit. Now, if there is a, there, so one, one way forward is that if there is a conflict, as you mentioned, you can step through it and try to, you know, see it, make sense of it. Um, otherwise, it is also possible to do the second scenario. So let me see if I can um, just mark resolve and then abort. Yeah, so let me, let me give a little more color to that. The reason I don't like stashing is because sometimes people use it as a long list. 
Mm. So in, in the example that you just showed, you stash something and then immediately go pop it on a new branch, which is great. Like that's, that's what stash should be used for. What I find though, when I'm teaching people or people that are unfamiliar is they'll just stash and stash and stash and stash because they've been working on things and they want to come back and they want to like deal with it later. So it's not an immediate process where they stash and pop. It's, it's a longer form of I'm storing my work so that later I can come back and do it. I see. And in that circumstance, I would say you should just make a commit that you can undo. Just don't push your commit to the remote. So don't, right. don't secure that. Don't share that with anyone else, but maybe you can save your work in a different way than you're um, familiar with, which would be to use some more advanced stuff with Git. So that comes with all sorts of dangerous caveats. Like, don't do this when the commit when other people have access to the commit, but generally it would just be to you save a commit and then you come back and reset it, which rewrites history, and then you work from where you were. So in terms of being able to, so to break that into two parts, mm -hmm. so say this was where I was storing all of my work, I could easily undo it to, you know, if I wanted to get rid of it or if I wanted to make additional changes before I really commit it and push it to my remote, there's always the option too to reset to any commit just by right clicking on a given commit, right? So if you want to reset and if you want to reset hard to discard everything, that would be one way you could continue working from a given point. Can Does, does that undo button protect you from the scenario I described? Can you undo two commits that have already seen the remote? If it hits the remote, no. Perfect. Uh, okay. Yeah. It only, and then you can redo too. It's, that's right. So if I want to redo and recreate that commit, um, there it is again. So there's glow feature, the webcast commit. So does it fade out? Can, can you actually, I don't know if glow feature is seen the remote, but I'm just curious, w would that remove itself as an option by, by fading to? Oh, no. When you hit undo, so you're saying in the scenario where I push this up to the remote and try to hit undo, yeah. what would happen? It would just tell you it, it has undone as far as it can. Oh, cool. So it, wouldn't, it just wouldn't do anything at that That's point. That's awesome. So the whole lecture, normally I give a 20-minute lecture about here's how commits are structured and here's why you shouldn't do things like this. Mm -hmm. You just take it away. That's perfect. Yeah, just like, here we go. <laughs> undo. And if you push your remote, you got to reset. Because I, I take it when you reset harder than push back up to your remote. Maybe you're doing a force push there as well. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, when we can handle those scenarios too. And hopefully the UI makes it a little bit easier to understand. But, but that's if you reset yeah. hard. Otherwise, right. if, if the remote hasn't seen it, you wouldn't need to force push. So right. even, even in the scenario I described, you can get around it, but this tool just fixes it for you so you don't have to worry about all the things I was talking about. And so, and then for those of you who, um, who may not know the reset hard, that's what, this is the option that's available. When you really right click on any commit, you can hard reset the branch that you're currently checked out. To, to a specific commit. So I do this sometimes when I want to go back in time, so to speak. Maybe I've made some commits and that just didn't work out and I just prefer to go back. So that's one way that you can get back to that point. If you don't want to just create a new branch and work from there. Right. We're uh, talking about rewriting history. A lot of this just yeah. has to do with if, yeah. if you think of Git as a time machine, so just transplant this to, to where we are in time, um, if you could go back and do things differently, that's exactly what Git allows you to do. Mm -hmm. And if you want to imagine, I don't know if anyone's seen the butterfly effect, but if, <laughs> it's, it's a very dark movie in certain <laughs> areas, but it, that's kind of yeah. like what you can do with Git and branching where you, you go back in time to a specific moment and then you can make different decisions and see what those would look like. Right. You can create a branch, you can reset an existing branch to it. Yeah, there's different, there's definitely some, cool things, some cool fancy footwear you can do. Um, I loved growing the graph. I loved that you, it, it happened really fast, but you, the, the working state of our repository, the files were kind of, we made a bunch of examples here and you said, okay, let's just destroy this and go back to where we were. Um, that was super cool. So I don't, I don't know if you recall what I'm talking about, but it was it's like when I just reset, it was kind of like a reset, but it happened uh, just from the modified view on the right-hand side. 
so you added a file or two. It was there. I think a, a commit was in progress. I see. And then you wanted to remove the in progress I things. I did. I think what happened is I clicked this trash icon. That icon, yeah. Dis- discard everything. And yeah, yeah, that's what happened there. That's great. A lot of times uh, people want that functionality and it, it is kind of doing a reset to, to remove it. So that just kind of hides that from you and makes it simple and straightforward. That's, that's wonderful. Yeah. And uh, let's just give it one more go. So it just resets everything to, in my case, the merge commit, um, which I made after that merge conflict. Real quick before, it looks like we're headed towards the end of the session here. I did want to show the file blame that's also available here. And I'm actually going to look for the YAML file. So previously, I showed you the history, right? So the ability to go through. And so the YAML file has had lots of changes to it. And I can see all the commits that have been made. I would expect this file to get lots of changes because you could think of it as a table of contents. So that navigation that you see here on the left-hand side, that's where we build out what shows up in that list. But say I'm just interested in knowing, well, who added what? Let's go to the file view here. So you see that we have all these colors uh, alongside the code. These colors correspond to a given commit that was made. So I, and I can also scroll here. That's what you saw right, right there. So if I wanted to see who added hiding, mod, hiding and soloing submodules integration in GitHub, I can click on the color and I'm taken to the exact commit. So it's this one right here that's highlighted in the bottom left corner. Diane made this late last year where she updated the file structure. And again, if I wanted to click on the commit itself, I can go all the way, I can just click on the ID number and I'm taken straight to the commit that was made way back when in December. So and I can see everything that she did here as well. Looks like she made, again, a number of changes where she added a whole bunch of files and I can review all the other changes that she made alongside. So that's all just by looking at the file blame. And that, that is just even being able to see that is fantastic. I, right now on my team, we, we've restructured some of our internal repositories to work more closely together. We, we had individual repos and we've kind of consolidated a few of them. So we've made sweeping hundreds of um, changes and just even being able to click into that view so nicely uh, would, would save us a lot of time recovering some files that we didn't mean to remove. Again, time savings, right? So, time saving, yeah. Straight um, TM. Giving new ideas, hopefully giving the viewers, <laughs> you know, ways like, oh, okay, when I encounter this type of problem, I can just go here. Yeah, I mean, like right, literally right now after, after this call, I need to go save some files that we can <laughs> There you go. Yeah, that's what I want to hear. And I did want to make one, one final thing. I know that some folks come from, I think, subversion sometimes when they're migrating over to Git. I want to draw your attention to this pull icon that exists here at the toolbar. We do have different options available to you. Probably the ones you'll use the most are fetch or pull. So these options are here because you can set the default action that occurs when you click this arrow button. So I just selected fetch. Fetch is pretty similar to, I think the term was subversion update, where I think it's similar in principle where you're allowed, it gives you the ability to see how the repo has progressed without you necessarily merging the changes into your local. So that's what a fetch just does in general. So if that sounds like something you prefer to do, maybe you prefer to first take a look at what your teammates have been doing before you bring it into your own repo. That's maybe a nice default setting you would want to consider. Okay. Fetching, fetching, um, and so a pull is a fetch automatically followed by a merge. The way right. that I describe this is, mm-hmm. um, like if you could get back in that time machine and then see outside of it, do you want to merge yet? Do you want to bring your future up to date with that yet? Or do you want to wait a little bit, make a few other adjustments and then bring it into to, to reality? It's like hitting refresh on your browser where you might have stages queued, but you need to refresh them to, to kind of um, bring everything up to date as you're saying. Okay, I think that about covers all the major features I wanted to make sure we hit on. We talked about the merge conflict tool. Uh, We touched on how to implement your external merge tools of choice, um, file history and file blame, and then a little bit about just quick toggles between fetch versus pull. Not bad, right? 
Not bad. Thank you, Jonathan. That was really helpful uh, for me. And I think it's going to answer a lot of questions for, for other people and excited to direct more people to this video. Of course, it's my pleasure. Thanks for everyone for watching and Eric, it's good. It's good joining you. Thanks.